Imagine that you just bought a used computer after finally saving up for a few months. You take it home and find out that it just doesn't have a heatsink? Bruh, what? You forgot to test it when you bought it and the seller ghosted you, so you're kind of stuck with what you have. Not having any money left, you decide... Instead of paying for a heatsink, I'll just make one myself. Aren't you full of great ideas? Considering the sheer, uh, creativity of humanity, this is bound to have happened at some point. So, let's see if it actually works. For starters, we're gonna need some baseline maximum temperature readings, and for that, I'll be using heavy load. Heavy load basically just puts your system under maximum load, and is a good way to stress test it for thermals. Right now, I have heavy load set up just to stress the CPU, and I have all its readings over here, so let's see how good the stock heatsink is. It was actually pretty good, and never thermal throttled, so that's what I was gonna be shooting for with the coin heatsink. So, 10 minutes into testing, we saw a maximum CPU temperature of 55 degrees Celsius, and the current CPU temperature is about 52. So, that's the score to beat. But before we actually make the heatsink, I did some quick googling about the composition and thermal conductivity of the different metals inside of the respective coins. And if my calculations are correct, quarters and dimes should have the highest thermal conductivity, and would be the best ones to use in making a heatsink. So, we're gonna start with those. And with that, I ripped off the old heatsink and questioned why the heck I was doing this video. What am I doing with my life, man? Goodbye, boring OEM heatsink, and hello, uh, improvised heatsink. I was so naive. You may think that you're looking at legal US currency, but you're actually looking at prime heatsink material. I then sorted the coins to give this video the illusion of organization. So, this all is what we've got to work with. We got a bunch of pennies that I'm probably not going to use, a couple nickels that I'm probably not going to use, uh, some dimes, and a bunch of quarters, which is going to make up the bulk of the heatsink. I decided that the way I'm going to build up the heatsink is to first start with a layer of four quarters, then one quarter in the middle, surrounded by four dimes on the sides. And I plan to have this pattern alternating all the way up. So on I went, layering coin with thermal paste with coin with thermal paste until I reached a respectable size. The only issue I really ran into was that quarters were thicker than dimes and in some places in order to level it out I had to use two dimes. Eventually I ran out of dimes but I decided to just use up the rest of the quarters in a similar fashion. And the final product looks like this, made out of dimes, quarters, and a couple of nickels. It's relatively structurally sound. You know, now that I think about it, it might have just been cheaper to buy a heatsink with all those quarters, but let's just ignore that. Please turn on, please turn on, please turn on. Let's go! And now that we're back in Windows, the idle temperature is already worse than the maximum temperature on a normal heatsink. But as idle temperatures continue to rise, I decided to throw a fan on there too. I don't know what happened, but I restarted the computer and now we're missing most of the information for the i3, which is not a good sign. It actually does seem to be doing some sort of thermal dissipation, because the quarters pretty much throughout are warm, except for the ones toward the top. So I gave the computer a bit of time to cool off after hooking up the fan, and it seems that at idle, we're somewhere between 56 to 61 degrees Celsius. So without further ado, let's see if this coin heatsink is actually any good. And now... No, it was not good. I, I don't know what you expected. I don't know what I expected. It was like 83 degrees after a couple seconds. Um, it was like running the CPU without a heatsink. It was like a placebo heatsink. The quarters just got warm. The fan did nothing for heat dissipation. This, what, don't do this. This, <laughs> don't do this. Oh, you guys hear that? It's the CPU fan having the time of its life. Listen to that. I'm sure you can hear that because we're at 100 degrees Celsius. We could <laughs> we could boil water. <gasps> Ooh, that's a good video idea. What's really surprising me is that we're not thermal throttling. It's sitting at like the maximum TDP of 35 watts. It's just like, oh yeah, 100 degrees Celsius. It's normal. We'll just we'll just sit at our maximum TDP. It's fine. Now the quarters toward the top are actually a little bit warm. I think it's just the lack of airflow that's really killing this idea. I mean, maybe if I hooked up a few more fans, we could get it down to a reasonable temperature, but I don't think this is viable by any means. After I ended the final test, the temperature did kind of even out to about mid 70s, 80s, but that was at idle, which is really not great, especially for this level of TDP. 
I then shut down the system, let it cool off, and tried running some games on it. For the first gaming test, I'm going to be trying to run some BeamNG. We're sitting at a very comfortable 99 degrees Celsius at about 1 gigahertz, 900 megahertz, 8, oh my god. I think I'm going to stop this test before the i3 dies, but I think we get the point. Technically, you can game on it, I mean look, I'm pulling a solid 13 FPS, but you're going to fry your hardware sooner than later. So, no, you cannot game on a heatsink made out of coins, although that probably should have been common sense. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, comment, or even subscribing because it genuinely helps me out. I'm gonna go take apart this quarter heatsink nonsense really quick, but I hope you have a good day and uh, adios. This method was wildly inefficient and took like an hour to clean. Jesus Christ.